but a couple of you are from the Tropez, a politician, and uh, want an only female candidate in the 2017 presidential elections, and now candidate for Mark Sorada. Let's step outside politics, let's step outside your humanitarian gesture, uh, your life as a philanthropist. Tell us some other basic involvement. Sure. My life has pretty much been committed to helping to create uh, more of an educated society in, in our country. And what do I mean by that? Um, for me, education is it's a critical, it's, it's, it's one of the most important human rights uh, amongst the, the basic human rights um, that's, that, that is granted to each living person. Um, the rights to education, the rights to health care, the rights to nutrition, which is food, having three decent meals, healthy meal per day, and the rights to security, which is housing. Those are the four basic human rights that is offered to each living person. And you cannot deny a person out of one of those. But for me, yes, when you get the food, you eat it, you get the house, you live in it, you get the hospital, but then the part of education is so critical because the world is moving ahead and the world is moving at a rapid speed. And it seems like some part of the world is just moving backwards at a rapid speed as well. And sometimes I find myself um, in environments where I feel we're regressing versus catching up with the rest of the world. There's an advancement in technology, in science, in all these areas, development, and, and, and I feel like we're so far behind. We're so far behind. Um, and I want to see a Liberia that's, that's, that's moving, forging forward with the rest of the world. So when I left the United States back in 2005, I came home, I, was, I came into a space where I had the options to just make a difference. The opportunity to help was so massive, was so grandiose. And you know, children on the streets that should not be on the street because that was Liberia's future. Those kids are Liberia's future. How we treat them today is the, is the Liberia we will obtain tomorrow. And so I took all these kids off the streets. I decided to put them in a proper boarding school, a mission school, helping women's group because women are the backbones of our society. If we don't take good care of them, we will not have a, a better outcome tomorrow. And so to me, those particular demographic were, were so important. The women, the youth, the children, put the children in school, get the youth into a job and skill training as well as universities, get the women in power and so the women can make better decisions for themselves and their children. Um, it's all to me is this cycle that we must stop. It's a vicious cycle. If we don't care for these particular groups, you know, we, we're wasting our time. We're wasting our time. We can sit here and talk about building a good economy, building all these things, but if we don't take care of the women of our country, the youth and our children, especially girl child, we're, we're really not going to go anywhere because the success of a nation is always, is always um, a, a measure to how well their women are treated in society. If a girl is educated, you educate a whole house and a community. And so my philanthropy work has really been about empowering women, the youth, and children. Uh, they are the most marginalized group, so it was easy to come home in 2005 and just tackle those, in, you know, tackle those areas. Um, I've, I work with women group, like I said, to empower them financially because there is no empowerment without money, without financing or, or financing or funding. Uh, I see people talk about women empowerment, women empowerment, and they do no, no class and they call it a day. That's not going to empower no one. You got to give the women resources to go do the small businesses because women, are, women of Liberia, they're strong. They have a, they have a strong mind. They have a strong opinion. They have good, they have strong wills, but they just need financial backing. So that's what we focus on: training and small loans for women. The next thing is the youth. The youth are the largest demographic of our country. And we, we have left them out. We constantly tell them your future is tomorrow. No. I tell young people, your future starts today, not tomorrow. No one should tell you your future starts tomorrow. Your future starts the moment you're born. you got to be prepared. you got to be educated. When you're sick, you need good health care. When you're, when you're, you, have to, you have to have a decent security around you so you feel secure, meaning a good housing. you got to have um, three, you know, at least two or three meals per day. Those are the things we need to provide for our young people so they feel that the country, our country, Liberia, care for them. And when they get older, they will care for the country. And so um, the young people who are just, you know, very young, three, four, five years old, we've got to put them in a standard school to go through the, the grades, up to from, from primary to secondary. So my philanthropy work has been tackling those issues, tackling, um, trying to empower those, those demographic of young people and women in, in the country. Um, it's been a, the pride and joy of my life, but like I said, eventually I realized I was helping a few thousand individuals 
but there are still millions of young Liberians that needed scholarship, and I alone could not provide scholarship for all of them. There are still so many children who are left out of the education process. We have got to fight to get our kids in school, make our public school, our government school a better place and a safe place for them to be. Um, the women need empowerment. They need small micro loans. Today, the banking system really asks them for too many things they cannot provide. And we have got to reform um, the banking system so that we can, we can give women micro loans for their small businesses. And, um, and so my philanthropy work really just kind of merged into politics because from a political standpoint, if we put in the right policies and laws, we can make sure those basic social services are provided and granted to our citizens. And so hence the reason for the transition from philanthropy to politics. Thank you so much, Jess. Before we take a leave of you, is there anything that you want to mention we did not ask you in this um, interview? No, I think you did a great job. It's always great to sit in and have these conversations with you that will eventually go out to, to the, the vast majority of the people in the country so they understand my platform, why I'm, in the, why I'm running for office, why I'm running to be the senator for Montserrat County. I have a plan for Montserrat County that, not just, that, that is more than just a now, here and now. It's a long-term sustainable plan. If we start the, the action now, we will get far within the next few years. We'll see results. You'll see our children going to school. They're healthier. They're stronger. Our women are in power. Our young people are um, granted, they're being granted the opportunities they need to prepare themselves for the adult that is approaching them, that's fast approaching them. Um, my, my, my plan is holistic. My plan is organic. It will help Montserrat move in the right direction. We will bring investment dollars. We'll create jobs. We'll get our young people into schools. We'll get the health care clinics going on and moving forward in the, in the communities. And so that's, that's what I want to do for Montserrat County. I think it's something that will benefit all of us in Montserrat. It would also open up our country for more investment opportunity later on. So um, I urge everyone to go out and vote uh, for Magdalena Cooper to be the next senator for Montserrat County. Thank you so much.